Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm back in South Africa. Whirlwind trip, thanks uh, to Castle Lager to see the game on Saturday. Uh, what a game and what an epic uh, encounter to be at. And uh, uh, yeah, there's some, some there's a video I took of the anthems and getting into the stadium, uh, which is on, on my YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it already, go have a look. Might give you a feeling of exactly how it was to be there. Uh, fabulous occasion. I can only say thank you very much to Castle for the opportunity. Um, yeah, but uh, back here and back already talking about other things and we're talking about the next game, Tonga. And uh, yeah, uh, I think the biggest elephant in the room, I think we need to address uh, the Andre pollard Mane lubbock situation and uh, what's going on there. And uh, I think I, I need to start off by saying, you know, I think the way we look at it as journalists and the way I look at it in particular is that... Um, when you're discussing a play, you obviously try not to be personal because no player goes out to have a bad game, no player goes, you know, selects himself, and they all try and do their best for the national team. Some things work, some things don't. Some guys have got obviously better strong points than other guys in certain areas, but uh, the entire sort of yeah, debate around the fly-off situation yeah, has been quite ridiculous to me, to be very honest. So let's let's start off with the first thing. Um, yeah, Marnie Lebok um, obviously came into the side there at the beginning of the season. Last season they used Damien Willemser. Andre Polo didn't play international rugby last season or this season, was injured. Um, so the box had to make another plan. Marnie had an exceptional season as the Stormers 10 and obviously got his shot via that. Uh, I think he's done exceptionally well. I think of a guy in his first season of test rugby, really, because you can't really count last year. He only got one test. First full season of test rugby, he's done exceptionally well. That that coincided with the World Cup is is one of those things. Uh, no player chooses when they, they become a springbok. But yes, the one downside about Marnie's uh, game plan, is always a game has always been his kicking. He's a much more creative, much more... Um, you know, dynamic fly-off than we normally see in the spring box. And he's, he's very much not just a distributor, but he creates it. And we've seen it. You just have to think back to the no-look pass that you saw at the World Cup, you know, that game for the the try against, uh, for, for Kurt the Orange against Scotland. You think about the, the long pass to Cheslin Colby. And Marnie certainly creates some moments. And I'm, I've known Marnie since he was at the Bulls. And I, I, I've never, I must admit, at the time he was at the Bulls, I never thought of him as a spring box fly-off. Uh, neither at his time at the Sharks. I just thought, you know, he made, makes too many mistakes. But he's tightened up a lot in his, his attacking and defensive game and uh, has become a really good player at the Stormers and has really got confidence at the Stormers. So it's hard to fault him ever being in the box squad to begin with. That being said, I also came around this year where I thought he was really doing well and he had some great games for the Springboks. He adds a new level of creativity and he adds some, some X factor to the Bok back line, which I think was probably lacking in a way. Um, Damien Willemson never really looked comfortable at 10. He looks a lot more comfortable at 15. And if you look at him on Saturday, uh, he, he was easily my man of the match from the spring box. Uh, you know, he made 150 meters, beat 11 defenders. So he's really settling in at fullback. And I think the box management have decided to leave him there and try and take away the goal kicking duties from him. Yeah, you know, uh, it's one of those situations where you feel for the guy because um, yeah, uh, yeah, he's a confidence player, and it seems to me when whenever he misses a kick, he tends to lose a bit of confidence, and he's grown in confidence since he hasn't had the goal kicking duties. He's really playing like a play in form. He's becoming the playmaker, the box need, the second playmaker, and he's really you know, he's beating defenders and he's playing with a lot of confidence. So, to those asking why Damien Willems is not kicking, that's pretty much the reason. Yeah, he's a type of guy who who did it because the box needed him to do it. Uh, but you know, it hasn't really been the box. I think the box management want to leave him to concentrate on his game and his qualities where he can attack, and that's what that's what's you know, sort of driving that. So then turning back to Marnie the box, um, obviously until they missed two kicks, two sitters, uh, you know, two regulation kicks that you'd expect any fly-off to make. And for yes, for that he needs he deserves criticism. Well, not needs criticism. He deserves to get some criticism. Uh, in South Africa, the fly-off is a hugely important uh, you know, role and, and pretty much like a quarterback in the NFL. He's the guy who's going to be in the limelight. He's the guy who gets the glory when he kicks all the points and he's the guy who takes the criticism when he doesn't. So yeah, there is a certain amount of criticism that should come on his way. He isn't a goal-kicking rut. He knows that. Um, the box know that. The box management knows that. 
But um, what has made it worse has been, in a way, has been the fact that you know they've they've sort of dismissed it all all along. There's been several questions along the t- along the last couple of weeks. You know, somewhere Jacques has, uh, Jacques Ninava has said he doesn't mind if he misses kicks if he wins man of the match, for instance. Um, and uh, last week when it was against Scotland, he said it wasn't a concern for him. So um, you know, there's there's those sort of things, you know, those sort of comments that sort of sort of roll some people up. I understand why the box management do that. They're protecting their player, and that's natural for any coach to do. Um, but I think now what happened on Saturday is, is seven of the goal kicking came back to haunt them. Um, yeah, you, you can't, and I think the point that needs to be made is that you can't blame Marnie alone. Um, you know, Faf had two kicks as well. They could have taken them differently. They were 50 odd meter kicks, but they decided to take them. So, yeah, once you decide to take a kick, then you must have a reasonable chance of success. So, the box could easily have driven that. To the, their lineout was on top. Their forwards were, were pretty much in control at that stage of the game. And they could have kicked those to the corner. Fair enough, they almost scored with the one that hit the post. But uh, saying that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I suppose almost means nothing in a game when the result doesn't go your way. Uh, it's a simple equation. They left 11 points on the table. Uh, they could have easily, easily got those 11 points. Whether that would have changed what Ireland would have done in the game, we ne- we'll never know. And this is not to take away from... In any way, to Ireland's victory, they soaked up the pressure. They uh, scored when they had to, uh, you know, and they were worthy winners to me on Saturday. I've got no gripes about that. Uh, I think what what I think I would rather focus on is is rectifying the things that the box didn't do well before it gets to a quarterfinal. So now, to con- all this concentration about uh, goal kicking and Marnie the Bock and all these memes that are flying around. Yeah, to me, it's understandable. Every single box fly has gone through that in the last 20 years or the 30 years or 50 years. And while it's understandable, yeah, you can't blame a, a, a defeat on one guy only. Uh, yeah, if, if you have to blame Marnie, you have to blame Faf for missing those kicks as well. Because, uh, you yeah, know, at the end of the day, they took the kicks at the post. And that was six points. So, to me, yeah, Marnie should have got the kicks that he had and he deserves a little bit of criticism for that. Uh, the box do have a goal kicking problem that is uh, a, an issue, and they've been trying to put it, you know, trying to paper over the cracks for a while now. And they, and they sort of, I think they've read the mood of the nation now over the last couple of days. When you've seen Rossi Erasmus's comments about, you know, um, about some of the goal kicking stuff, but saying that, you know, it's not one guy's fault they lost the test. They had a number of try scoring opportunities, they didn't take them. Uh, you know, they also were beaten at the breakdown. Uh, they weren't disciplined, and I think I, th- I put it in the... Like I said the other night uh, in the video, you know, to beat the number one side of the world, you have to be one, you have to be disciplined, and you have to be clinical. And I don't think the box uh, hit the, out of those targets on Saturday, and that's probably the reason why they lost. So, But okay, let's turn to Andre Pollard. Uh, you know, we've got the situation where everybody's been clamoring for him to come back in the squad. Everyone sees him as the silver bullet. And even Rossi sort of stood up yesterday and said, you know, he's no Superman. And you've got to understand, you know, that he isn't, well, he's an exceptional player. Uh, one of the world's best flowers when he's in form. But I think people forget, we've got very short memories. And this is not to knock Andre either, it's just to put the thing in perspective. You know, when, when Andre played, his goal kicking, test average, goal kicking average is 75%. That's not far off from where Marnie's is, you know, as a test record as well. Uh, that's the first thing. International standards are 80% and above, and and Andre hasn't been hitting those. In fact, people forget that in the last World Cup he was he was in the 60s. Uh, you know he didn't have a great game with the boot. He came right at the end when the box needed him to, but for most of the tournament he he was pretty iffy with the boot. And if the box weren't as dominant as they were uh, in that tournament in the games they played. Yeah, it would have come back to haunt him as well. So, yeah, Hunter is not the silver bullet that people think he is. Um, I think he's an exceptional player. Uh, then you've got to take into fact the next thing is as well, what message do you send out to the squad? Uh, I've said it before in the podcast. I said that you, you replace a hooker with, with, a, with a fly-off. So what message do you send to Marnie Le Bock, first of all? What message do you send to other players in the squad uh, that you're so desperate to get Andre Pollard in? I think he is somebody who they can use and he will play in a, a, a big role in the box squad. I think the one guy the box did miss on Saturday was Malcolm Marks, ironically. His work at the breakdown is one of the huge parts of their game. 
and uh, I think you know, they really missed his presence there as well. Uh, you know, Bongi's a bit of a different type of hooker and nothing against him, but Malcolm at the breakdown is something special. So, yeah. Um, now, so where does that leave us? I suppose that's the next question. And, and, and that is, is pretty much an easy one to, to answer. Um, you know, I think where fans look at it as player A versus player B, and Marnie must be dropped and Andre must come in, or Marnie must stay and Andre must move to 12. I think, first of all, let's address the 12 situation. Uh, Andre can play 12, but he's not the classical box type 12. The box is like a big physical center. He can take the ball over the, the advantage line, the Damien De Lenders. Uh, you know, Andre Estes, and Andre is not that guy. He's not going to take it over your, uh, over, you know, the, the the advantage line. He doesn't play that same sort of game. He'll be more of a distributor when he comes on. So yeah, you know, I don't think the box play that sort of game for him at 12. I think they can use it in certain games. Whether I would do it in a World Cup quarterfinal, semi-final, or final, I'm not quite sure. I still think I would rather stick with Damien or Andre Estes for that role. So then it comes down to Marnie or, or, or Andre, and that's what fans keep on wanting. Andre back in the squad, forgetting the fact that he hasn't played international rugby for more than a year. He hasn't played more than 30-odd minutes of rugby in the last three months. And you know, so he's still not 100% where he should be. So you're putting a lot of pressure on a guy who has to come in after only 30 minutes of rugby in the last three months, not a year, a year out of the test game. And in his first one or two games, you want him to be this exceptional mastermind. Fair enough. That's where the Springboks, the pressure they have to have on them. I'm not discounting that. I know that's what people will be their answer to me when I say that. But yeah, it is a bit harsh to expect this guy to be exceptional in his first game back after injury. I think uh, what what the box are trying to do, they'll give him game time against Tonga. Hope he comes through well, and if he performs well, well there, then he'll play a lot more against uh, against whoever they play in the, in the quarterfinals, probably France. Uh, but I think at the end of the day. Yeah, he is an exceptionally good player, but we've got to recognize the situation where he is, and there has to be a bit of a reality check in terms of that. Of course, nothing stops him from coming in and surprising us all, and players have done that before. But I think you know, the expectation, the pressure that they're putting on Andre now, and the pressure they're putting on Marnie now at the moment, I don't think that's healthy. And that's always going to happen in a tournament, and I know fans want results, and that's, that's what we're all looking for. But saying that, you know, I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, the box, look at it this way. They want both flowers to be firing. They want to be, their ideal situation in this World Cup would have been to have Marnie and, and uh, uh, Andre both 100% fit so they, they, they could choose which opponent they play who against. Then it would come down to tactics. Then it would come down to the opposition. And it would come down to how they fit into the game plan that the box want to play. So that's the way the box look at it. So I think we should also you know, recognize that the, the management have won a World Cup. Um, you've got to give them some credit for what they're doing. I don't think uh, they. I think they realise they can't sort of, you know, sort of uh, shift the goal kicking situation to the side. But if you still think goal kicking was the only reason why we lost that game, uh, then yeah, there's a lot of other other factors as well. And to me, uh, I know the Bok management look at it as a holistic picture, and they don't just look at it the goal kicking. And if they had taken those other two try scoring chances. Yeah, they would have. They would have won the game. There's a lot of these arguments you can make. Make, and I know it's coulda, shoulda, woulda. You know, after the fact, uh, it doesn't really matter. Ireland might have done something different to win the game anyway. The point being is that they're not out of the running. They've still got a quarterfinal to play. Hopefully, a semi-final, and hopefully a final. But they're going to need to be a lot better. I think in terms of physicality, they're fine. Breakdown work and, and maybe just the balance of the squad needs to be better. And, and I think there's a couple of other things, including goal kicking, that deserves attention. But if we're going to focus on one thing and one thing alone, that's not going to win them the game. So um, that's my take on it. Uh, you happy to, I'm happy if you agree or disagree. Uh, it's always interesting reading the comments as well. Uh, but yeah, I think the box would rather want two firing f fly offs than one fly off with low confidence and another one that's just come back from injury and still trying to gain confidence so uh, just keep that in mind and uh, yeah let me know what you think i'd love to hear it's been very interesting but thanks for watching this and i hope you enjoy it enjoyed it and yeah if there's anything else you'd like me to discuss please leave it below and in the comments and i'll definitely get to it if i can uh, thanks for watching cheers